Good morning and welcome to the vlog. At the end of the last vlog I left you on a very mild cliffhanger as to whether I would find a space opposite the boatyard when I came through that bridge. Well as you can see since I'm now here on this side of the bridge I did indeed find a space and I've been here for five days largely because of bad weather. We've had Storm Callum hitting the UK and whilst it's certainly been far far worse in Wales and Scotland down here there has been a fair bit of wind and a fair bit of rain and frankly I just didn't fancy moving. Now today it's not that great either. Very ominous looking grey skies overhead but the forecast has changed. It was saying it was going to rain all day and now it's saying a few spots of rain and I'm wondering whether to just move on because I'm getting itchy feet to be honest. Um, the diesel leak issue I located where the diesel leak was coming from, one of the pipes from a fuel pump injector up to a fuel injector had some diesel round it, and there shouldn't be diesel round the pump, it should be all round the pipe, it should be in the pipe. So that uh, nut has been tightened up a bit, possibly, it's ever so hard to get to, completely inaccessible, but the boatyard opposite, the bloke there got a spanner out and uh, thinks he tightened it up a bit, so we'll find out today whether it's cured the leak or not. Um, but the other thing I need to do before I set off is go down into the weed hatch. I'm pretty certain that as I was coming along the last mile or two before I got here, I've picked up something fairly decent round the prop because it just it wasn't working as it normally should do. There is the weed hatch cover. There is the weed hatch, which I still haven't de-rusted. I meant to do that last winter. I'll have to do it this winter. And now I just need to very carefully reach down there and see if there's any muck around the prop. Actually it was clear so either I was mistaken I'm pretty sure I wasn't that the, the, the power and the prop just wasn't feeling like it normally was or the amount of severe reversing and revving the engine I did to get the boat from here over to the other side of the canal to the boatyard and back again sometimes a good blast of reversing can clear things around the prop so maybe that did it in the time it's taken me just to do that, it has started slightly, admittedly very slightly, spitting with rain. And just looking at the clouds, I don't hold out a lot of hope that it's going to clear up anytime soon. So frankly, since I'm in no hurry whatsoever, I think actually I will go tomorrow. The forecast for tomorrow is the sun peeping out from behind the clouds, and I would rather go with that. So. I'll sit here with the stove on for another day and read a book or something. It's the next morning. Now, what was I saying about that forecast? Sunshine, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. I think all this will burn off, actually. So I am going to set off. Bye bye, Yardley Gobian. It's been quite a pleasant little spot. There's a loud road, but actually not that loud and perfectly pleasant. There's not a breath of wind. It's actually quite mild. It's rather nice. These are the goose fields of Northamptonshire, world renowned, where all the geese come. I'm making that up, obviously. Notice how this stretch, there's a lot of signs up from the Canal and River Trust 
all about how these are going to be winter moorings, which is to say areas that are reserved for continuous cruisers, people who don't have a mooring, reserved for them to use over the winter months, November to mid-March, I think, is the period. You don't have to take one up if you're a continuous cruiser, but it's an option. It's the one time of the year when you can not continuous cruise and the CRT don't mind if you've paid for your winter mooring. I find them quite expensive, but... Obligatory heron shot. first of the seven Stoke Brewer and Locks ahead. I'll stop at the services point just below that, get rid of some rubbish, fill up the tank, that kind of thing. And of course once I've done those locks, it's the ghostly tunnel, the return trip through Blissworth. Facilities used, onward into the first lock and two boats came down just as I was pulling up, so not only did they leave the first gate open for me, hopefully the rest of the flight will be roughly set my way. Heading into lock four. The promised sunshine has not materialized, you'll notice. Right, that is the bottom five locks done at Stoke Bruern. There is now a little stretch here with lots of moorings, quite a popular spot, but it's the one where I didn't get very good internet last time when I was coming down. And even though there is no sign of this sunshine, I'm vaguely inclined to press on, do the last, cu fly, uh, last couple of locks at Stoke Bruern, then go through Blisworth Tunnel and moor up in Blisworth. I've never moored there before. These two, it seems, will be winter moorings come the 1st of November. That is a very full lock. Now, because it's all very damp and slippery on the locks this morning, this other single-handed boater prefers not to go down the very slippery lock ladders having emptied the lock, so he's going to bow haul the boat out, in other words, pull it out on its ropes, and then get back on when he's actually pulled it out to the lock landing. And so for that reason, I have moved off the lock landing and out of his way, and once he's pulled out, obviously I can just steer on in. Here we 
we go then. Last lock before we head through the tunnel. There, not causing any mischief today. The Stoke Brewer and Trip Boat, which was, I'm almost certain, the source of the ghostly tunnel lamp on my way down. It goes to the mouth of the tunnel, comes in a bit, apparently turns off the light so everyone can see how dark the tunnel is, and then backs out. So that's what the mysterious ghostly light was. That's the Stoke Brewer and Canal Museum, by the way passing. Probably worth a visit. Oh, and it might have been this trip boat. There's clearly more than one, but one of them, one of them gave me a fright. This is an absolutely beautiful scene, isn't it? That is the most fantastic little tender to a narrowboat I've ever seen. That's amazing! That's brilliant, love it. There's the tunnel. I'm going to get prepped for it, fleece, waterproof jacket, hat, all the bits. out. Very, 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 uh, I'm tempted to say foggy, it's not fog, it's diesel fumes, but I couldn't see the end pretty much until the last 400 metres. Look at those soggy panels. Blissworth was mostly dry, but a couple of big damp spots where a waterfall tumbled merrily onto the boat and me. I'm virtually back. Gonna look for somewhere to moor up now. Popular little spot, Blissworth. Blissworth Marina to the left, towpath moorings to the right. 